Institute's Islamic blasphemy culture comes to the UK. In an eye-opening speech at the Royal uh, United Service Services Institute, Robin Simcox, the United Kingdom's commissioner for countering extremism, sounded urgent alarm bells about the rise of anti-blasphemy actions threatening, th- excuse me, threatening free speech in the UK. In a comprehensive speech, Simcox delved into the intricacies of the intro issue, stating that it's not just by extremists, but by a, quote, fundamentalist reading of the scripture, wherein all other rights, including free speech, are made subservient to defending the honor of Islam's prophet. He cited instances like the cancellation of the Lady of Heaven film and anti-blasphemy actions at Batley Grammar School and Kettlethorpe High School. Quote, I am not interested nor capable of refereeing theological disputes, but you don't need to be a theologian to say that violence, persecution, and discrimination and abuse of Ahmadis is, is unacceptable, Simcox said. He also discussed the broader challenges posed by Islamism, which he described as adaptable and guided by a supremacist worldview, cautioning that it presents an ongoing threat that shouldn't be ignored. Um, so this is really interesting. So yes, like I said, who was his technical position? The commissioner for countering extremism gave this speech recently, and I read a transcript of the entire speech and it's really, really interesting because it goes over several different aspects of counter extremism that the UK is currently facing. And it touches on the issue of Iran and how Iran is actively posing threats to journalists in the United Kingdom to the extent that Iranian journalists had to pack up and leave um, their posts in the UK. And so they're basically saying that how like shameful it is that not only are these journalists not safe in their home countries, but they're not even safe in the UK. And then it also went into um, issues surrounding the Taliban and how there are instances of people trying to like launder the reputation of the Taliban in the United Kingdom. And um, then it went into issues of blasphemy and all these instances of how basically the culture surrounding Islamic blasphemy is coming into the UK, including like threats and abuse of Ahmadis in the United Kingdom. And one issue that is a huge problem is like, here, here's a quote that he said. Um, however, the main issue here is not the home office. The main problem is surely that some in this country wish to host these clerics. And for example, a cleric from Bangladesh called um, Inayatahu, no, I don't know how to pronounce the name, um, Abasi, came on a speaking tour of this country, meaning the UK. Abasi is open in his belief that there is a need to behead anyone who criticized Muhammad. So like, these are the speakers that are being brought in from overseas to do speaking tours, and they're allowed to do speaking tours in the UK. And he said, this is not a one-off. Again and again, clerics from Pakistan in particular, who in their own country openly praise those who carry out acts of violence in defense of Muhammad's honor, then end up being hosted by institutions in the UK. Um, And he went into also um, digging into the issues of Islamism in in the United Kingdom um, and you know talking about like how it's it's supremacist it's it's expansionist uh, and it's adaptable um, yeah Islamists excuse or seek to rationalize act of terrorism not quite defending them but not quite criticizing them either acting as the good cop to the terrorists bad cop Islamism relies on upon a series of false claims, such as the West being hostile to Muslims in Islam or that the government is inherently Islamophobic. This is not to deny nor downplay the very real anti-Muslim prejudice that exists in pockets of society, but to recognize how it is exploited by those with unscrupulous agendas. Because the reason these grievances narratives are pumped out is to manufacture an existential threat to Muslim identity, to segregate and isolate Muslim communities from secular influence, to undermine trust in the state. 
groups like the Muslim Brotherhood do this and more. They use democratic means to subvert democratic pr- concepts. They embed themselves in local councils, charities, in schools, and elsewhere. Um, and we ignore the ongoing challenge posed by Islamism at our peril. Um, yes. So the, I found this this speech to be very informative and also um, taught me a lot about what the United Kingdom is doing to combat these threats. Because obviously, I think the UK has a much more severe Islamism problem than say, the United States or Canada, for example. Where do you think this is going? I keep, you know, I keep looking at things and it just, I don't know what the direction of this seems to be. Keep All the predictions seem bad for the UK and other, many other European countries. And I just don't want to be very pessimistic. And I don't want to be one of those people who keeps like fear mongering about the future of Europe. Um, but I also don't want to deny reality, so I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what. What, what are your thoughts on what's going to happen about the future of UK? Because things are not. I mean, look at all the people who are coming out and supporting Hamas, right? I'm, I'm not, and I'm not talking about after Israel um, atta- started attacking Gaza. I'm talking about before. You know, mm-hmm. right when Hamas attacked Israel, before Israel responded, all the places where people came out and supported, you know, waved out the Palestinian flag, which at that point really they were celebrating. War. They were celebrating Hamas's attack on civilians in Israel. Um, I mean, this is, it, it seems to me it's getting worse and worse, but I don't, I don't, and this is now special. So sometimes I feel like, are we just noticing things because we're surrounded by people who are, um, anti-Hamas and anti-Islam are are we getting an exaggerated version of this because we are in our own in, in the environment that we are on online we keep getting posts like this so I'm, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm getting a biased perspective of what's happening because people around me are constantly how is it a biased perspective this. when you see over a hundred thousand people marching I know. in the streets of london <laughs> i know i know i know i know i'm just i just want to be i'm not saying that i am i'm just saying sometimes i want to make sure that i'm not living in a bubble and i'm just uh, getting confirmation by people that agree with us and maybe i have a biased view because i'm constantly getting messages like that but now and you know, what are you showing us is now expert opinion so this is you know, I'm just trying to be extra careful and extra skeptical, just so that I, I, I'm not living, I'm, I'm not in an echo chamber who people are just confirming the things that we agree on, right? But then when you send me, when you when you review this, and this is expert opinion, right? I mean, I'm assuming it's expert opinion, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, just the know, commissioner on be... countering extremism. Yeah, who yeah, completely so I don't overhauled know. I don't... their preventing extremism. Yeah, he. From what I was reading, it sounds like he's done a lot to overhaul the entire, um, like ministry or department, to make it more up to par. Is this a sign of hope? Is this a sign of for hope? Like, are are we now going to see more, like in the UK? Because in the UK, they seem to be very, very passive when it comes to taking these threats seriously. But is that is this now a sign of people taking this more seriously, at least in the UK, or no? <laughs> I think so. But on one hand, like the counter extremism ministry or department commission, whatever it is, um, is really like the last line of defense within a society, right? Like it should, there should be more changes happening before we get within a culture, before we get to counter stream extremism programming. So, Mm. I mean, I don't, with the UK and France, for example, I I don't know what to make of it. Um, You know, I don't know if it's just the analysts and people that I follow, but a lot of people are echoing the sentiment that um, multiculturalism and integration, like the, the UK has woefully failed in practices of integration. Yeah, I don't know how accurate it is. I don't know if it's just the people that I follow. I don't know if it's just echo chambers. But when confronted with a lot of the imagery you see coming out of the UK, it's kind of hard to think otherwise. Um, and I saw one quote, Armin, and I basically, 
when it comes to the attack on Israel, like on the 7th of October, a lot of basically the quote was like, a lot of people went to bed a liberal and woke up a conservative. Oh, wow. When they woke up and saw the attitudes that they were surrounded by, that were in their cities. Mm -hmm. When they saw imagery of hijabis ripping down images of kidnapped babies in their neighborhoods. Well, I mean, uh, you I know, mean, I like, hope they say, li yeah, I mean, li I mean, why? I mean, liberal is the best. I mean, maybe we should say, you know, left woke us, you know, pe woke people went and became liberal. That's what we should say <laughs> because liberals, liberals are good in fighting these things. Okay. It's the woke people who are the problem here, not the liberals. <laughs> so why why are they going conservatives that conservatives are just as bad when it comes to responding to these things i mean but i, see what I you're know saying. it's so tricky it's so tricky i mean i i don't especially with the labels the labels aren't necessarily very helpful um yeah, yeah. Well, lately i've been joking about calling myself a um a a, a, a conservative liberal <laughs> Yeah. Like I'm, I'm very liberal, but I'm conservative about it. I don't know <laughs> what you would call that. Maybe I mean the term I think you're looking for is classical liberal, but people like uh, Dave Rubin have made that cringe. But yeah, I mean the classical liberal is supposed to be the term here. No, but you're but, right because a lot I'm, of conservative commentators like Dave Rubin have been like failing their own principles because he's a supposed free speech absolutist. But then when some news came out about mm -hmm some city or somewhere possibly like banning Palestinian protests or some form of expression of pro-Palestinian or even pro-Hamas sentiments, like banning that he was like, maybe the West does stand a chance. And I'm like this from the free speech absolutist, bro, that's cringe. <laughs> like, Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, by the way, I have to see which bands they are talking about because people, some people, some of the bands are unjustified, but some of them are, like you know they're saying for example some of the bands are we have university professors in class supporting hamas so if mm -hmm. a university asks you not to do that and that is not quote unquote exhilarated exhilarated mm -hmm. by what they saw yeah i mean so, that is not so anti-free speech it's not anti-free speech to ask a university pro professor to not support Hamas in your classroom, okay? Because you could go write articles outside of that as much as you want, but like, but university has a right to be like, yeah, you can't do that in the classroom. I think that's not anti-free speech, but yeah. Um, yeah, see, they're saying classical liberal is now considered conservative, which is, yeah, look at where we are right now. Classical liberal, I mean... Leftist leftist ideals comes from classical liberalism, but now they consider classical liberalism to be conservative. Which is, I don't know what what kind of world we live in right now. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then I'm gonna be a very anyway. like grungy punk rock conservative, I guess. <laughs> no, don't 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 say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> oh my kidding. god, no. <laughs> Okay, we are not conservatives, people. We do not. We do not. We will not give in to conservatism just because Islamism is coming. And anyways, my conservative um, friends are in the corner, and they're like, "Yet, uh, <laughs> no, 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 it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen." Okay. It's so funny because um, as soon as I get, I, I, you know, if if you go down the rabbit hole and you start to get a little a little tempted or whatever it takes me about like 15 minutes before i see something from, uh, coming from the conservative side that is absolutely absurd and completely unexcusable yeah. and i'm like ha ha never mind <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean we have news today i think that shows you how ridiculous conservatism is as well so there we go i mean is islam is conservative that's the whole po that's the reason why islam is bad because it's conservative um yeah. We got a lot of guys. We got a ton of super chats between the last two news. So thank you guys. And guys, don't forget to like the stream because, you know, I think a lot of you are watching and not liking, but liking the stream helps us get our message out there. I think we're doing a very good job covering this. I think uh, relative to, I, I mean, I watch other people covering this and I'm like, God, we need, our stream is pretty good. We have, we have good takes here on our stream. 
Like there are not very other. I mean, I, I mean, I know this is, seems to. I mean, we should we should talk about how good we are more often. I feel sometimes we shy away from it. But I watch other streams and they have no idea what they're talking about, and we do. So make sure you like the stream so more people watch see us. Thank you, and and tell people tell people about our show and uh, tell people that they need to subscribe to Atheist Republic. We got five super chats. That's amazing. This is oh, wow. a lot of super okay. chats. Yeah, let's dig in. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, says, "Thank you for the super chat animation. I hope you both take care of yourselves. All this news does bring an emotional toll." Oh well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Elif gave us five dollars. Thank you, Elif, and saying, "Hi, is YouTube or Atheist Republic channel available to be watched in Iran, or only Iranians outside of Iran able to watch your Persian channel?" Oh no, we are live and in color. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. Eighty. Um. Around from Tabriz to Zahedan, you can find us. <laughs> Well, eighty percent. So, I, so because people in in Iran can only watch YouTube with um, VPN, because because YouTube is banned in in Iran, right? So, YouTube is uh, banned in Iran, so you cannot connect to YouTube with the internet. But a lot of people get around that with VPNs, and that's why using YouTube stats, I can see how many people are watching us from Iran. But, uh, but but I used the poll on our community tab to try to figure that out. And according to the community poll, 80% of the people who watch our Persian channel are from Iran. So that's significant. You know, the uh, people get around their, their band by that. That's so but, cool. Yeah. It makes me so excited. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I love going on the Persian channel. I have so much fun. Uh, yeah. uh, Lebronzo gave us six euros thank you saying we need a big witness protection style systems for blasphemers or is it a band-aid solution plus systems that give new ids and housing to ex-muslims okay well here's the thing there are a few instances in which people have been accused of blasphemy in the uk and they're still living in hiding and that happened years ago and that's unacceptable mm. so when when there is a threat to someone's life the government in this capacity the government does have a duty of care to provide security to that person however witness protection systems is not the solution because ultimately that falls upon it becomes a burden for the people who are facing these accusations their entire life gets uprooted and changed that's unacceptable the people that deserve to have their entire life uprooted and changed are those making these threats to those individuals they have deemed themselves unworthy of being treated as a normal functioning member of the society because they're exhibiting antisocial behavior. Those are the people that need to face the consequences, not the people that are threatened, whether they actually blasphemed or not. That's, it, it, it doesn't even matter because the whole issue of blasphemy is that it is so intangible that it can vary so much. It's make em ups The whole thing is make em ups so the, the the victim of the allegation shouldn't be the one facing the consequences for these things. But if if all else fails, of course that they they deserve to have all the protection necessary. Um. So yeah, it is kind of a band aid solution. And they're saying plus systems that give new ideas and housing to ex Muslims. Well, okay. So if you go to a new country and try to seek asylum because you are an ex Muslim, that's I guess depending on the country, kind of what happens. But if you're a born and raised citizen of that country and you become an ex-Muslim and you're facing threats to your life because of that, like the government isn't going to give you a new ID. The government isn't necessarily going to give you new housing. Um, so that's unrealistic. That's not sustainable. Um, then, I mean, I've had friends who their family, you know, in the heart of Europe decided to put a hit out on them because of these things. Um, and they had to go into hiding and they had to get police involved. But again, the problem is, is that their life is the one facing the consequences. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Colin is, gave us another super chat. Thank you, saying the video 
titled, Would You Call This Ex Ethnic Cleansing on YouTube is great to show what really happened to Palestinians. As atheists, we need to learn and grow. Armin, that seems to be addressed to you. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I, I would suggest another channel unpacked because it responds to a lot of the lies that people say about Israel. So I know that there's a lot of anti-Semitic because people, is, Israel and Jewish people get a lot of hate. There's a lot of content out there that is trying to misrepresent what what misrepresent history and what what has happened to Israelis and Jewish people throughout the history. I've seen so many lies being spread against Israel online. But a really good channel that is takes all of this apart that I also want to uh, recommend is the channel Unpacked because they have a lot of good videos um, against all of this nonsense against Israel. So please also check that out. Unpacked is a very very good channel that you teach you history and everything but yeah but thank you for the super chat um also let's go to the next super chat do you want to respond to that yeah yes imran gave us 10 canadian dollars thank you imran saying psa you can pay for super chats with google play cards for better privacy mm. okay um also f anyone who drops exploding things on thousands of kids yeah, well, also let me also let me mention this by the way. Um, if the people who put the children there as a as a human shield against the attacks of Israel, so Israel when Israel goes to Gaza, they're not trying to bomb the children there. They're trying to bomb Hamas. They're trying to take out military uh, targets in Gaza. Uh, but it's Hamas that makes it very, very difficult. Hamas on purpose puts um, its military units under hospitals and under schools specifically to increase civilian casualty. Uh, the IDF does everything more than any army in the world. The IDF has tried to tries to reduce the civilian casualties when it tries to defend itself. It's Hamas who tries to maximize the civilian death on Israel's side and also to try to maximize civilian death on uh, the Palestinian side. So the main uh, murderer of those children on Gaza is not the IDF. It is Hamas. It's Hamas that is responsible for those death. That if Remember, every time, every time IDF, there's no benefit for Israel for civilians to die in Gaza. There's absolutely no benefit. They get nothing out of it. It's Hamas that benefits from civilian deaths in Palestine. And that's why they are the ones who are trying to maximize the death on the civilian side. Yeah. Thank you for the super chat. Um, okay. Um, so next one is from Benny Wolf. Thank you, Benny. Saying, how do you use the term woke? I thought I was just being more aware of the minorities being uh, persecuted and about just being nice. Okay, so... The origins of the term woke come from the African-American community in the United States, and it has to do with having a critical consciousness, consciousness, a.k.a. woke, to systems of oppression and race, racial oppression within the United States. This, this is kind of the origin. And so that's all fine and dandy. Um, the problem is, is that over the past several decades into what we've seen it evolve into today is a very illiberal ideology. Um, one that can sometimes excuse and even promote people explicitly being treated differently on the basis of their immutable characteristics. Um, see Ibram X. Candy as an example. <laughs> um, so it's it has, you know, like positive connotations, like being, like, oh, you know, we're 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 conscious of oppression. We're sensitive to systems of oppression. We want to make sure that there are that we ameliorate these 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 systems that keep people um, unequal within society. That that's one thing. But then it has another connotation of being overly politically correct, canceling people over the tiniest thing, basically not practicing any forgiveness or grace for those who are learning. Um, uh, also, um, even, even promoting a lot of censorship, self-censorship, um, 
within society, not allowing criticism of these ideologies of its in and of itself. Um, am I explaining this well? Am I making sense, Armin? Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, oh, and also um, hyper focused on identity politics mm. in a very brittle, dogmatic way. That's when it's. You should come on the sense. Persian channel, explain wokeism to people. Mm -hmm. Can you do that on the Persian channel? Because a lot of people want you back to explain that. So that's very important. Hell yeah. Secular rarity saying, yeah, the no forgiveness or second chance stuff is the part that upsets me. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Overly sensitive, hyper-focused on identity politics to its own detriment and dogmatic. Um, so it's important to, and also wokeism is a way for us not to blame the entirety of the left okay like i think that's a, that's the a purple that, that that's the purpose of it right because i feel like a lot of people are anti-left now and they don't realize that we have women rights because of the left we have lgbt rights because of the left we have free speech rights because of the left we have uh, the right to assemble and protest and all of these come from most of the greatest uh, <laughs> human rights movements in the world is yeah, I mean, it comes from the left. So I don't want us to dismiss all the benefits of leftist movements just because some people are crazy, right? So that's the the reason why we say woke is because to not paint the entirety of the left with one brush. That's that's what that's what the point of that term is, I think, for some people. Yeah, right? Benny is saying thank you. Yeah. Trying to explain to older people who are not on social media. Well, I'm glad that we could help. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very illiberal fringe of the left. Um, and a lot of people that criticize this kind of movement don't even like to use the term woke anymore because they feel like it's so overused and like a lot of people can't even, who are against it can't even define it correctly. Um, yeah, but it keeps we, changing. People, we social use it justice as a warrior general, and they work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Generalization to help pinpoint the kind of fringe that we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> State of Oblis is saying woke is half to half, half ass liberalism with a massive ego. <laughs> Right. So here's the thing, because because the problem is whatever term you used to use them, you mentioned uh, to to describe them, uh, eventually conservatives will keep using that term as well. And then we liberals feel gross to keep using the terms that conservatives are using. And then we keep switching to another term. Right. So it's like social justice warriors. And now then all the conservatives are like, oh, social justice warriors, social justice. like, OK, let's move to another term. We don't want to. We feel icky. <laughs> we feel icky. <laughs> so, so that's why this word keeps getting reinvented. <laughs> all right. Right. So, um, yeah. Yusuf Dunphy is saying, don't expect Armin and Susanna to both be conservative because they don't like conservatism. Armin stated one time the conservatism to be the biggest threat to the liberal world order. True. Yeah, true. yeah, yeah true. exactly. True. Yeah. You can't lose sight of that. Oh, my... And Mariam is saying, I love Susanna. Ashakata <laughs> Mariam. Merci. <laughs> Oh, I just want to quickly highlight this. I know I, really quickly I will get over it. I know I know we have to move on, right? Cohen saying, I have to correct what you uh, what your current saying. What? Uh, IDF doesn't care about Palestinian lives. This is grossly untrue. Well, let me tell you guys. The IDF warned uh, Palestinians to move out of the areas. Like they, they warned the Palestinian civilians uh, to try to minimize civilian casualties. Um, the IDF threw out leaflets all around the northern Ga northern Gaza, telling them to move south so that it, they could reduce uh, civilian casualties in Gaza, something that is unimaginable that Hamas would ever do for Israelis. Um, and so on these leaf leaflets, they had maps, they had writings in Arabic, arrows and everything, trying to get civilians out of the areas where they're going to get the most of the bombings. And it was Hamas who blocked these rows trying to keep civilians, Palestinian civilians under under the bomb bombardment by Israel's government, by Israel's military. Imagine that. Imagine Hamas blocking the rows to try to, and there was a recording, Susanna, I don't know if you heard about this, right? I just recently saw a recording. The Israeli military has these Arab uh, people within the Israeli military that their job right now is to constantly call people in Northern Gaza trying to tell them to get out of northern Gaza. Like even with all those leaflets and everything, they're calling people, right? And one of these recordings, the guy, the, the, the Arab-speaking guy from the IDF military, 
uh, and they're recording all of this. One of them that I listened to, the guy picks up in Gaza and he's like, why are you still there? I need you to, I need, you guys need to move. You guys need to move out of there. You need to go to Southern Gaza. And the guy was like, I can't. And it was like, why can't you? It was like, they brought, they blocked the road. Like who blocked the road? And they were like, Hamas has blocked the road. And like, and he said, they're shooting at us. They're shooting. So people who are trying to, Hamas is shooting at Palestinian civilians to keep them in Northern Gaza. So there are more civilians casualties. I, it's unimaginable. They're not just blocking the road. They're shooting at the cars that are coming, trying to make them make sure that they stay in the places where they they are where they're killed. It's unimaginable. It's unbelievable. I wish I wish that Hamas cared for Palestinians a fraction of the amount that the IDF cares for the Palestinian people. Don't let people lie to you guys. This is they're completely changing reality. They're completely changing reality, but in front of you, like. If it's 180 degrees the opposite of what's happening on the ground. It's embarrassing how much people are trying to change reality. Anyways. Okay. So, uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to go, I'm going to put myself down for the next news, but can we clap for the next mm -hmm. news? Or do you want to I'm going to be honest. When it comes to a lot of these things, like I literally just go full agnostic across the board because I feel like I have considerably lessened ability to distinguish based on the facts available to me, what is true and what is not. Yeah. So the only responsible thing I can do is just go full agnostic. Yeah. It's because people are so, the, the amount of anti-Israeli hatred is so much that the the lies that are spreading is so it's so hard for people to now figure out what is is it true what is true or not. Yeah. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.